Hello everyone, good day. I am Mia Basilisco and in this video I am going to discuss the language of religion. The main graphological devices. One can make use of art paraphrasing, spacing, and capitalization alongside a normal range of other punctuation works, some of which tend to be used idiosyncratically for this variety. The central feature is the combination of all the, these factors to split the text as a whole into clear demarcated graphic units, which are sometimes sentences, sometimes not. The initial letter of each of these written consents units is always a capital, they always end in a period. In all cases but one line. All lines expect the first are set a little way and from the margin. The consequence of this clear demarcation of sense units is that the reader is guided through the text in a series of jumps, and not in a smooth, continuous flows. This facilitates his speaking in unison and also reduces the likelihood of losing the place. Another factor facilitating unison speech is the punctuation. On the whole, it's very simple and is given a clear phonetic value. This emerges if one compares the phonetic marks in the above text based on a tape recording of the service with the graphological marks in the text which our congregation was reading. There is an almost complete coincidence of the periods with, with major poses and co commas and brief poses, and there is a little variation in the length of poses of both type throughout any given text. Perhaps the most interesting thing is the way in which the phonetic crit criterion dominates the grammar. Normally in English, a period is used at the grammatical end of a major sentence, but here it is used depending on how long a pose is required, regardless of whether the preceding structure is grammatically a major sentence or not. Periods in liturgical English follow major and minor sentence. Types is about equal proportions. Other marks of punctuation are infrequent, has little distinctive phonetic value, being sometimes equivalent to a comma, sometimes to a period. Its purpose seems purely semantic, usually indicating that the structure which follows in a climax or summation of some kind. Semicolons and other punctuation marks do not occur in this edition, nor are they frequent in other editions and elsewhere in liturgical language. However, it is impossible to generalize from the punctuation system of this edition to that of others. Other editions sometimes split up the text in quite different ways. For example, one edition of text V replaces most of the periods by comma. All editions, though, agree on the use of capitalization, which is the distinctive feature of this variety. Capitalization is used for proper nouns as a normal, but is also used for personal titles of the deity. For example, lamp, lord, and light, and for certain pronouns referring to him, like for example, thou which is not found in other varieties, apart from occasional usage in such formal written contexts as inv invitation and legal languages. The distinction between titles on, on one and scribing the deity on the other, in fact, depends on this use of capitalization, like O, as if conventionally always a capital, as I in English as a whole. Finally, any utterance which needs to stand out from the rest of the text is to given a distinct typographical identity. For example, the printing of the procedures, either descriptions of what the priest is doing, or instruction to the congregation in red or in italics, or the highlighting of the praise of central doctrinal importance. So let us move on to the clarity of the graphology. It is important reason contributing to the readers having very little difficulty with such texts. The stretches of the utterance in between punctuation marks never pose any problem of speakability. The reader moves from punctuation mark to punctuation mark, knowing that to each point there will be a definable pose between poses. The overall pace of articulation is slow and irregular. All lexical words are given a degree of strong stress, and there is utterance in between punctuation marks, never poses any problem of speakability. Moreover, there, there is frequent parallelism between interposal, units of this kind largely due to the repetition of similar grammatical structures containing words not too difficult 
different in syllabic structure. A, re um, a rhetorical feature which reaches its extreme in the speaking of Latinist, that consequently other develops a regular, regular rhythm rhythmical balance between lines or between the parts of a line, which also contributes towards mass fluency. Factors such as these combine to the produce the standardizing of effect, reducing the idiosyncratic extremes between people. Thus, a naturally rapid speaker will tend to slow down, and vice versa. Occasionally, it is the case that a person has such a rapid rate of articulation that he cannot communicate, communicate this to the conventional rhythm that the majority are using, but it's interesting that such a person always obeys the main process. From the point of view of non-segmental phonology, each punctuation group is a prosodic unit, but it is the prosodic unit of rather different kind from the tone unit, which is found in all other, other varieties of the spoken English, as it requires only two obligatory parasodic features. A most emphatic syllable and stress conforming to the distribution of lexical words within the unit, whether one introduces variation in nuclear tone type or in a pitch range is optional. One may, if one wishes, articulate the words as, as much feeling as possible, introducing a wide range of, of pitch patterns, but as a far as a total communicative auditory effect is concerned. Such effort is unnecessary. A congregation or any speakers in unison has very much one voice. When a group speak and utterance together, differences in the phonetics and phonology of their articulation become blurred, and one is left with a single voice impression which to the ear of the outside listening in consists solely of variations in emphasis. Frequency of imperative structure. We should also note that the absence in this text of questions of any kind, questions may occur in more rhetorical types of prayer and in certain scriptural quotations, but they are on the hook uncommon and of course would not normally be followed by the direct verbal response of any kind. Formal religious English is also characterized by the certain deviation from the expected order of elements within sentence and closes structure. This is nothing as deviant as the structure noted in the authorized version, but one does find a frequent positioning of adverbials in marked position, such as the early placements, just like 13, 18, 26, and 54, where two adverbials are coordinated. The morphological idiosyncrasies of certain parts of the prominent system of religious English have been so frequently pointed out that we shall not dwell on them here. It is clear that Dal, um, with its related forms, is probably intuitively the most dominant features of this variety. What is never pointed out, however, it is that other pronouns show restrictions also. The first person singular rarely occurs in the form of prayer, even when only one person is speaking. The complexity of group structure of this variety is the main reason why the underlying simplicity of the sentence and the clause structure is not readily appreciated, and it is the case that the most noticeable features of religious English as are normally noted as being contrasts operating at the group level. Both nominal and verbal groups display distinctiveness here. Within the nominal group, we should single out the following points of the special attention. This is one of those varieties where adjectives are allowed to follow the noun. Adjectives as such are frequent. Most nouns are modified by at least one. For example, in the Holy Gospel, perpetual memory precious death, and etc. The majority of nouns are uncountable. We shall, we, 
over half the determiners are positive possessive pronouns. Post modification is normally present, and all types of these are to be found. The relative clauses are perhaps the most common, especially after vocatives and personal pronouns as s and one may and one may find without difficulty sequences of relatives such as would never normally occur in in the conversation and that's all about my report about the language of religion and once again thank you for listening i am mia basilisco